Confidence is uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. I think we should just rip the band-aid off here. And I think as we grow older and we start to reveal more and more of ourselves in the way that we think on social media, you start to recognize that we all have this one thing in common. We have no shame. And it's so funny because more and more people are living out loud and showing themselves on social media. And you see that there is a clear spectrum. There are some people that choose to show an outfit or a beauty routine or two. And there are some people that show a lot more. And we won't get into the details about the things that they show, but we know that it exists. And you're probably thinking to yourself, like so many others, wow, I can't believe that they're revealing so much about themselves. These people have no shame. And you're absolutely correct. They have no shame. And neither should you. I think we have to define our own boundaries as what we are willing to share. But the shame about what we do share should completely subside. No matter what, people that are sharing their lives, they're doing it unapologetically. And I think the key to get you over the hump of existing in your authentic self is existing in a life without shame so that we can get closer to living in our purpose without limitations. So welcome to the Raw and a Half podcast where we get real and then some. I am your host, Jasmine Siri. And every week I will speak on different topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and I discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind together so that we can accomplish our goals from a healed and open place together. So let's get started. The very first step in identifying your fear of being seen is getting to the root cause. Understand why you fear being seen. Is it due to past experiences, insecurities, or social anxiety? Identifying the root cause can help you address it more effectively. I had to challenge those negative assumptions about who I was. Often, the fear of being seen is fueled by negative thoughts and feelings about ourselves. And it's our job to challenge those thoughts by asking ourselves, are these thoughts rational or based on assumptions? We can't heal what we don't unpack. And a while back, I had this epiphany that my mind was just a folder that storage was full of uncomfortable memories or scenarios from my past that shaped me. And a big part of gaining my confidence was finally cleaning out the old junk files of my past and in my mind. This actually takes work and some processing. So go back to the many moments in your life that have made you insecure and think about it from your current level of awareness. Sometimes when we are so close to a situation, it's hard to see it clearly. And I've had so many scenarios happen in my past that I blame myself or others for, and I cringe at the thought of it even happening now. But in order to save myself, I had to let all of those things go and see the scenario with true compassion for myself or for the others involved. I remember growing up in my childhood, it was like the era of people pretending to be emotionless. So if you're someone like me, where you process things and you wanted to understand why things happen and you wanted to work through it all, that just wasn't a cool thing to do at the time. And I think oftentimes I feared showing up in vulnerability almost to the point where I hated the best part of myself. Because back in the early 2000s, they're just weren't conversations being had you know things just weren't talked about everyone lived and loved the surface and I couldn't compete in this heartless game and this kind of emotionally stunted me for a while it hardened me most importantly and it wasn't until I became an adult and I opened myself up to more people and I truly saw the things that I hated the most of myself becoming a gift for others, that's when I just started to expand on what the damage feeling heartless or pretending to be heartless caused me in ways that I can now share with the world my gifts because I've seen how the way that I am has helped so many other people. Practice self-compassion. Be good to yourself. Remember that everyone has vulnerabilities and imperfections. Treat yourself with the same compassion and kindness that you would offer a friend. 
you know, I realized that in order to take a step further in my truth, I needed to build a deep sense of trust within myself. And becoming my own best friend was the key to doing that. And truly, it wasn't until I exercised the strength of the friendship that I had with myself that I really understood what being a friend actually meant. And really what it looks like which is being honest with my boundaries enough to know when they're not being honored, being able to acknowledge when I'm wrong, and speaking positively about myself and advocating for myself. I don't think I say this enough, but loneliness has brought me the closest to myself. And it's unfortunate sometimes when I witness people create these tiny dependencies on their friends group or on their relationships as confidence boosters or ego boosts. Not that it isn't a great thing to have community, but I'd like to challenge your ability to have enough compassion for yourself and confidence in yourself in the event that your relationships change and people transition out of your life and move on. And we have to ground ourselves and develop a strong sense of self so that at any given time, and when a person decides to leave us, we are not left without, especially not left without confidence. Because that the end of the day, you are the only thing standing in the way of your highest timeline. And if I didn't have friends to watch my videos, I'd still make videos. If I didn't have friends to support my dreams, I'd still follow them. I am the ruler of my own life and I had to truly develop the confidence enough to stand in my power of what that truly meant. So what do we do next? We start small. Start small by gradually exposing yourself to scenarios and places where you feel seen. Start with low stakes scenarios and gradually work your way up to more challenging ones. Each small success will boost your confidence, opening a window for you to exist in the full authenticity of yourself. Set realistic and achievable goals for yourself related to being seen and being vulnerable while celebrating your progress along the way. Starting small was starting my YouTube channel. Starting small was starting to make short form content. And that's just my way of doing things. That's my way of showing up. But there are many other ways. If you're starting a business or you're putting yourself out there in whatever way, my journey was writing out my thoughts and making 30 second videos. And as those videos got longer, I started to see myself being stretched and I love the fact that no matter what whether people saw the video a lot of people saw the video or no one said anything about it I knew that it was important for me to complete this task I knew how important it was for me to focus on the task at hand to move forward I think for a very long time when you exist in different physical insecurities about yourself it can be very hard to see yourself especially on camera and that was me and honestly for a very long time I had an issue with viewing myself on camera it's just something natural that I had an issue with I never liked viewing my scenes when I was done with them as far as acting goes I just wanted it to exist in what it is because I could never truly see myself how other people saw me and then when I tried to view myself every time I did all I could do was pick apart my insecurities all I could do was remember why I was never chosen or why people didn't like me or why why I was always compared but never on the on the winning side and it took away from a lot of greatness that I had it took away from me actually like looking at my talent and saying like oh wow like I'm actually fucking amazing at this like I'm a great performer and it's just so depressing when everyone can see your greatness everyone can see your beauty everyone can see your power but you and so many people hide in shadows because we just truly feel we're better off not being seen we're better off not experiencing the hard truth of other people seeing us and just genuinely not liking us some of us can't really handle that yet I remember for a long time I couldn't now that I have this confidence to say you know what 
I'm not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but I love me so much. I no longer feel bad about who God made me to be. I don't think I was put here for this long to feel bad for myself. So at the end of the day, the goals needed to be reached. The expectations needed to be set higher for myself. And in order for me to do that, I needed to stand up. And the goals were realistic. I started very small. I remember when I got to a thousand views on one of my videos, I was so like, it, the world was mine. No one could tell me anything. And I'm like, wow, like this could, this could work for me. This could work for me, someone who's never really won things, someone who was never really chosen. It's so funny how many people are able to see you enough to choose you when you finally choose yourself enough to want to be seen or feeling like you're worthy of being seen. I think for a lot of women, especially in relationships, I'm going to get there, especially for relationships, we put ourselves on this rock waiting for people to choose us and often we experience so many lessons of people just not knowing how to or not doing it in a way that truly resonates with us and if you're unaware you go many years of your life never really feeling good about yourself unless someone else is choosing you so a lot of the good things that you feel about yourself are dependent on someone else. And it's such a powerless way of existing. It's so daunting for even your partner or your friendships to carry the weight of your happiness. There's no room for them to mess up. There's no room for them to be human because they have to be the person that is bringing you validation and happiness. And I had to take a step further into what I truly wanted. And I knew that this was something that I wanted enough to do it consistently because I had to say, like at the end of the day, if no one saw me, if no one understood me, if no one resonated with what I said, if people thought that everything that I said didn't make any, any, any sense, I still wanted to do it anyway. I have been so successfully existing on my own as far as like, it's always going to be me against the world. I've been in spaces where it's always been me against whoever. And I will take my side to the very end. So people not really understanding me didn't bother me because I was already given a lifestyle that has equipped me with experiences of standing in my own truth confidently. Focus outward instead of inward. Instead of fixating on how you're being perceived, focus on the act of service that you're giving or what it is you're actually doing and making that something worthy of having. Shift your attention outside of and away from yourself and focus on the task at hand. I like to do things that scare me because it makes me better. I like to do things that challenge me because it makes me better, different, smarter, wiser by my mistakes, by my triumphs. And I want you to think about that when it comes down to being seen. Um... If you are someone that's experiencing the journey of being an actor or an actress and you're putting yourself out there and you're telling other people's stories and you're wanting to make sure that you are really being of service and being a vessel, I'll never forget my very first experience in the theater was so raw, was so unapologetic and it was so intense because I was only in a two-person play that was an hour and 45 minutes so either I was talking or they were talking usually when you're on stage and there's a full cast of maybe five to nine people there's room for you to breathe there's room for you to maybe take a step in the wings and allow other people to be a part of the story and tell and say their lines but when it's just you and someone else and you're always on for so long 
and you've memorized these lines and every time you perform, there's a flow. That was the scariest, one of the scariest moments of my life because it was me professing to God that like, okay, this is what I want. And I felt like God was like, all right, here, and gave me, sorry about that noise, and gave me this load <laughs> of like pages and pages of dialogue. And I would sit in my apartment on the floor just studying like what did I get myself into God like why did I agree to do this for no money (laughs) but it was just like just raw passion it was like if this is what I say I want this is what it is like and it was challenging for me I truly feel like I caught a spirit of like this angel that was just with me and speaking through me and allowed a story to be told through me And it was one of the most beautiful experiences of my life that has carried me into this. Now I feel like because I was able to speak so proudly and share someone else's story, I now have the confidence to tell my own in in this way. And it was all because I committed to the stretching and the challenge of just showing up. And, um sorry I'm sorry I'm getting so emotional because it's like this is my first time ever processing that as truly what it is and maybe people won't see it as that but for me it was like I like seeing God in a lot of the things that I do um or at least I try to um so yeah that was just such a an amazing moment for me in my life and it was definitely a step that I had to take to get here Use visualization. Truly visualize your most confident self. Visualize the version of yourself you are comfortably being seen. This can help boost confidence and release some anxieties about being environments where you are seen or most vulnerable. Before I started my channel, or you know what? Because I started the channel like a year ago, but when I got to a point where I'm like, okay, I need to come with a different approach. I need to come a little harder. I need to refine what it is I'm doing. I need to develop a craft out of this. I went on Pinterest and I just started looking up like different styles, like different girls, not YouTubers, but just like with my look, like I cut my hair. I did all of this like curating of an experience and tried to package myself in this way that was digestible, not because I was easy to take, but how can I give myself in a way that people understand? How can I style myself where people are able to understand that this is like fully who I am? And it was so fun, like visualizing myself, like growing and being in this way. And this is what she looked like. This is what she was. So now that I'm in the future version of myself past the Pinterest little um, wall that I created, I'm very proud, but I know that there is just another notch that I can get to. And I'm always striving to go towards that. And I have to, you know, continue to challenge myself and push the needle so that I can constantly elevate and every time I hit a different layer of places to grow I do feel anxious I do feel the anxiety of like is it gonna hit is it gonna is it gonna work but you know you just kind of let it go I've made like hundreds of videos at this time I remember when I've only had five and so I am truly proud of this version of myself and I hope everyone reaches that point where they're like so far away from where they started and know that they can't turn back so all they have to do is push forward lastly before doing any of these challenging tasks that require you to be seen practice mindfulness before you are entering spaces where you feel most vulnerable or most seen I like to take deep breaths and really ground myself into the present moment to keep my intention towards the act of service that I want to do or the things that I want to produce or the greatness that I want to become outside of all of these things and the ways that I self-sabotage. Before every video, I still get the butterflies. I still get the jitters. I still feel like this pressure and this weight. 
And I don't think that's ever going to go away. I think because this really is passion for me, I like the butterflies. I like the, just the excitement of wanting to use my voice. And I know before every video, I do like do a quick prayer or a quick affirmation that this is exactly where I belong. And I have to take a deep breath because I'll start to get the little chihuahua shakes. And um, sometimes it gets hard for me to talk. So before I actually like get into a flow, I'll have to repeat certain lines over and over and over again until I'm like, and that's normal. I'm not going to beat myself up about not saying things the perfect way every single time. Like even the videos, even the audio, like it could be probably better, right? If I had the resources to make everything super perfect, 100%, great. But it's not, and that's not going to stop me. What's important is the service. What's important is what I feel like I have to share. And it doesn't matter the packaging that it comes in. Of course, you want to make things great because you're representing yourself. But it's not needed, unfortunately, as much as we think that it is, it's really not. And sometimes when we focus too hard on how we want to deliver, it becomes a distraction. So I want you to rest. Don't overthink it. Flow. Stay present. Ground yourself. Take deep breaths. Take a little shower. You know, being sane will become easier when you know how to calm yourself in the act of being seen and being vulnerable. I've watched a lot of interviews and someone that I truly admire is Nipsey Hussle because of the way that he chose to communicate. And I remember, well, I will never forget really when he spoke about the way that he interviews because there was a time where he was just blowing up by the things that he was saying and it was resonating with so many people and it was inspiring so many people. And someone finally asked him, like, how do you do that? How do you just have this presence about you when you're doing interviews especially from where you came from and he just kind of said that I slowed myself down and I started taking deep breaths and it was just important to actually relay the message more than I guess how it looked or anything else and when you are truly trying to speak from the heart from your true and authentic place it will come naturally when you are most comfortable and when we learn how to self-regulate or self-soothe in spaces where we are extremely uncomfortable, like standing in front of a crowd, it is so beneficial. And not only that, it's something that we can teach our children or anybody that is having issues with taking a stand in their life and being seen. And I know there are so many people out there that probably want to make videos or want to have a podcast, want to use their voice, and it's very scary because it seems like the more that you say, the more you're going to offend people. The more that you say and show yourself, the more people like to nitpick and say things about your appearance and who you are and who they think that you are, and those things will come, and it does feel scary, and it feels uncomfortable and it feels like you're swimming in a deep abyss and I want you to know that those feelings are normal and everyone is also existing in this deep sea space that we call the internet or wherever you choose to take up space and it's not something that should scare you away oftentimes when we see people walking in spaces like public speakers I am inspired by people that do TED Talks and that are able to speak so clearly about whatever they have to offer this world. And those spaces scare me. Um, and I don't know how they do it, but at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure before they did it, they didn't know how it was going to be done either, but it didn't stop them. And when you see someone existing in just the task that you have always wanted to do, living in a lifestyle of openly living a, a raw and authentic life know that the fears that you experience those come to everyone but it's feeling the fears and doing it anyway and the more that we do the things that are scary the easier it becomes and I think that's what I want people to eventually 
come to the realization of that um, we are no different than you. We are all kind of special in our own ways, but we are not above anyone when we decide that we want to share ourselves with the world. We're just deciding to do it in spite of all of our fears. And if this is something that you want to do, I suggest that you should take it in that way and approach this head on because it's not until we do the things that make us feel uncomfortable a numerous amount of times that we actually grow through those uncomfortable things so they no longer make us uncomfortable. And I know that is so repetitive and I just, if anyone's watching me and they want to pursue speaking up and using their voice and whatever that means, I hope that this is the video that allows you to feel comfortable enough to take the next step of doing it anyway. Um, because I remember being that person that watched the videos of people that inspired me. And I just want to be able to, you know, do my due diligence as being a part of the community that helps other people walk in their authenticity. Um, I know there are so many people where I've spoken to a lot of people that have said that they wanted to do X, Y, Z, but they didn't know how to start. And I feel like that's the perfect place to be. You just kind of start. And then the more that you do it, it develops and it becomes a thing. Even the structure of making videos. You have to make more videos to discover what that structure is for you and what feels right for you. If you don't do it, you kind of never know. And yeah, I think that's pretty much the gist of the fear of being seen is standing in the fear of being seen so many times that although the fear exists, it's just smaller and smaller the more times you do it. I still get nervous before I make a video because I'm afraid of what I'm going to say and it stems from sometimes a lack of trust. And slowly I'm starting to speak, share my voice without using a script because a lot of my things are written out ahead of time and sometimes it feels a little bit limiting. It's like I trust my words when I write, but I can't trust when I'm speaking. I feel like I'm a better writer than I am a talker. And this is a small step towards me removing myself or removing the layers that I have for so long kept me from being consistent. I felt like if I spoke truly from the heart, maybe I'll say the wrong thing and it'll ruin everything. And I think because I'm human, that's not something that should scare me. It's something that should allow me to step up to the plate and face my challenges. So by me freely expressing myself, I'm letting you know that I'm human and that um, as much as I want to reach people, not everything that I'm going to say is going to resonate or it's going to hit. And when you're making videos, videos of you just really talking and expressing yourself, you want to make sure that you're reaching people and maybe the probably the most authentic and richest thing that I'll say to help a person probably is something that is not even written. Maybe it's a download that I receive in the moment. And if I stick to my scripts, I'll probably never reach that. So... Just another reminder that everyone is working and going through something. Everyone has a challenge that they're trying to face head on. And that's just one of mine. I think that's all that I have for today. I hope that what I said resonates with you. Um, don't forget to rate and review this episode on Spotify if you're listening from that place. If you're on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Do all the things. Click that notification bell so you know every time that I post. Um, follow me on Instagram at jasmine.siri. I would love to hit you guys up on there. Send me messages. Send me an email. Um, just any way that you would like to connect with me, I'm down for it. If you have any interesting topics, I'd love to hear them as I'm trying to discover more ways to impact you and give you some good insight as much as I can. And uh, yeah, that is all that I have. I will talk to you all in my next one. Bye.